Okay, hey everybody, uh, welcome to Sig Scale, September 16th. I added the link to the notes in the chat. If everyone can please open it and enter yourself as an attendee or add any items that you want to talk about to the agenda. Okay, let's start uh, with the first item. Um, so there are a few, uh, there are some new bugs that I, uh, that I actually had reported, um, that I'd reported pretty recently. Um, these are kind of interesting. So uh, we're going to talk about um, two of them. I think there are, there are actually some other items we can even talk about related to this that I saw, but I um, I kind of want to investigate a little bit more before um, I post these issues, but we'll just talk about um, the two that I, uh, um, that I think I understand the most. Um, so just to give us some context on this, um, so we're, we're doing some testing internally um, at a pretty large scale, and we were seeing the VR controller panic um, when we delete um, a bunch of VMs, not, not a ton, like, I mean, maybe like a few hundred or something. Um, and at this scale, there's a lot of events that are occurring. Uh, and um, sometimes, you know, with, this, with a lot of events occurring, uh, some of the edge trigger events like deleted um, can be missed by, uh, by our watch. Um, and the way that uh, the controller handles this, it puts this specific key um, on the queue. And um, this key is a different type than, um, than what uh, the VR controller expects. It expects a, um, a, a VMI type and it tries to do type assertion on it. And it actually uh, causes a runtime panic um, and so there's um, uh, this actually, what ended up happening is that we, there's two of our controllers and they basically would alternate between uh, panics and I, and it was hard to really tell if it was um, kind of um, like kind of the, it, it sort of eventually healed, but it's hard to tell exactly how it healed other than that uh, perhaps there was enough events that the, the sort of deleted key, the, um, this deleted final state um, unknown key was eventually flushed and then panics went away. Um, it's hard to really say, but eventually it, it does heal. Um, so there's a, a PR open to to fix this one that's that's here and, um, and Roman uh, has already reviewed it. So that's uh, that's one. Are there any questions on this one? Um, I'll go to the second one if there aren't. This was kind of neat. Okay, um, there are even, so, so this um, this sort of like um, key, a, a, there's, there are multiple um, objects we actually um, have cues for. The other ones, the other objects we have like pods and data volumes have um, catches for this. I think it was just virtual machine instances that was missing it. Um, and it occurs in rare cases. I, like I've never seen this before. It just occurred at this very, um, at this kind of, at this scale and it doesn't occur all the time. So I don't know what it is, but it just, I think we just hit a point where we um, we just started missing some deleted events and then it started to pop up. Okay, let's go to the second one. So this is actually from the same um, same incident, um, same scenario, deleting VMIs at large scale. Um, in the in the VR controller logs, there are tons of these uh, status reason and valid errors, which is a, a a 422 error. Um, and uh, basically like the server or the request that you're making is valid, but the server is not processing it. Um, and I was looking around a little bit on this and we we do, so the vert controller is at this point um, for, for some of the objects, it doesn't control them, the vert handler has them. So it's trying to do patch, uh, it's trying to do a patch on the status field. It does it for conditions and um, and for uh, this active pods um, field under status. Um, my thought is that it's it's this active pods field that something is failing with this. Like we're, we're trying to patch it and it's not working. Um, so we get these 422s. This isn't harmful. Like it's it's like, it just, there's there's tons of them in the log. I mean, because when we're cleaning up the object, it would be nice to get rid of these. And here's an example of the error you can see right here, um, and this is just from a few different objects, but um, it completely populates the entire log. And what component was that? This is for controller that's generating that? Yeah, yeah. Huh. 
Yeah, and this is what I think. Uh, so this is the code from the error. So you can see, um, I mean, the matching error here. And um, so we try to do this patch and patch bytes, um, like where the two things that I was mentioning is that the, in the status field, it's we're, we're patching some conditions and we're passing patching this um, active pods field. Um, I haven't fully tied it together, but it's it only really showed up when uh, we were deleting. Um, I didn't notice in that other case, but um, and it seemed really I, I hadn't noticed this prior, and it seemed like this this only occurred at, at large scale. Something was something just seemed to be off. Um, this was the because I mean we've we've done like some other error code analysis, and we haven't seen this many 422s. It's just sort of there's now there's sort of an explosion of them. Right, Ryan, do we know who's rejecting it? Is it from one of the the validating webhooks or or what? Convert API or? No, I, I don't know. I don't know who's rejecting it. I'm that it could be the validating uh, webhook. Um, I don't know. I I didn't like. I couldn't I, I, see like. I tried to trace this in the API server logs, and I didn't find like a a pair of like the requests that in the API server to say like okay, this was rejected, and in the Vert right. API. But maybe it's in the API server. Maybe it's in the Cube API server. So I I don't know, but the I, reason I posted this one though is I think I have a little bit of better understanding than this as the, uh, for this one, but I think there's still some more investigation here as to like to pinpoint exactly because I, I think like there are two like I know that we're like I can see what we're I can see the error I can see what we're trying to do, but I like you said I, I think it was Gavin I don't know who's rejecting it and um, I don't know how um, how often doing this and i also don't know why like um that wasn't quite clear here's here's my theory uh so in this specific instance where is a patch correct that we're yeah we're making yes so in our patch we're doing a json patch and we have a test condition followed by the actual replace or add or remove or whatever we're wanting to do and the test condition saying here is the way we think this struct should look based on what's in our informer and what the information we have. And here's what we're wanting to change. If that test condition fails, the whole thing will fail. So that'll say that the reality is that the thing you're trying to patch doesn't look any more like what you're thinking it looks like. So your patch isn't going, we're not going to apply your patch. And that's when I've seen things like uh, rejected due to an error in the request. What could be happening is that our informers are behind. Uh, and we're constantly trying to make a change on the VMI and the information we're using to make that change is inaccurate because the informers haven't caught up to reality yet. And I made an optimization for the update path for uh, the VMI controller to say, don't try to update this VMI again until we've seen uh, the previous update arrive. I didn't do that for the patch. So it could be the same problem where so was that the 429 waiting. error? Like that was the optimization you made or is it different? I'm sorry, what? Was that the, um, was that the, um, oh, I don't remember the error code now. That was the, uh, I, I remember you. Yes, it was, it was what you're thinking of, I'm pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it was specific to the update API call, okay. not the patch one, and we, we do both. Uh, and I only I addressed the uh, instance where we're doing an update. I did not address the instance where we're doing a patch. So it could be the same problem. It's just manifesting itself differently because in the case of an update, for example, uh, we're going to fail in the back end uh, because the updates uh, revision or whatever is not accurate. But in the case of the patch, we're rejecting the update or the patch uh, because the patch condition is failing. Uh, that we've supplied. So we're going to get a different error, I think. Um, but the same cause could be invoked for both. Like it could be the same underlying cause that we're trying to uh, modify an object and the object that we're trying to modify, we think it looks different than what the back end uh, thinks. Okay. That's my theory. I, I, okay. I, I, I'd bet on it. Yeah, I'm trying to look for your patch. Um, if I have it here somewhere. Oh, reduce VMI collisions. This is this yep. one. Yeah, that's this it. one. Yeah, it, it's, it sounds sounds plausible to me. Okay. 
409 i said 429 okay yeah okay so yeah it sounds plausible i mean so the, even like you said there, for additional context and this is sort of the like like i said it, the, this is happening at the same time as you know that panic is going on so there's we're restarting ver controllers a lot where informers are catching up a lot um and this kind of was kind of led to another thing that that i was kind of wanted to explore a little more is like the time it took for the vert controller to catch up it took a little bit because there's a lot of requests where it's like hey uh we want to update or want to do something on this object like but we're not we're behind there's a ton of those so i mean it, it sounds like it sounds yeah that sounds it's a good point um i'll tag this in here just as a something as a reference and we can uh so we mark it. Okay, and the fix is relatively simple. We just have to follow the same expectation logic. It's almost, uh, it's only like maybe 20 lines down that we're doing it for the update. We just need to follow something similar for the patch. Um, okay. But we need to, I need to look at that a little bit just to make sure that we're only issuing the expectation when the patch is actually going to change something. I, I think that's the way it would work. But anyway. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, so those are two, um, two new bugs. Um, and like I said, there, there are some other ones that I was thinking of, like I briefly mentioned, like the time it takes for a controller to catch up um, could be another one. Um, but I, I want to get a little bit more measurement on that one to see, like, get like a rough amount of time and some little bit more logs to see, um, just to get a better picture of it um, before our file of issue. But it's something that we've noticed. Okay. All right, let's go to the next uh, bullet points. Um, so reduce memory overhead for the vert launcher. So this, uh, this is a discussion I actually wanna have here. We have a, we have a few issues open, um, let me open all of them. And I wanna kind of consolidate here um, on, a, on a mission. Let's see, where's the first one I opened? Okay, this one. Um, so reduce memory overhead of launcher um, is the first one um, and the ones that um, that I thought we had some overlap on was um, the was this one so removing the monitoring process in the launcher to reduce its memory footprint um, and then also the um, the profiling the control plane and high load um, so I guess so I, my point is this is like um, I, I kind of wanted to talk about like the goal here and see if we can outline some of the tasks. And I think like, you know, this is, sounds like to me, like one of the tasks that could actually go into here um, as a possible optimization for launcher. Um, but I kind of want to talk about, you know, some of the others. So um, is, um, is it Daniel? Is that who this user is? Hi, Google here, it's me. Hey. Do you want to um, so do you, do you want to talk a little bit like elaborate on some of your goals with this and you know maybe we can kind of enumerate some of them and um, see where we sure. can kind of see where we can go with it yeah go ahead so the context is that uh, there is an Aldrichy internship <clears throat> uh, and it, it is paid uh, open uh, open source community uh, internships for for diversity uh, in a tech and. We just thought that, I mean, we need some pro projects so the inter internships can work on them. And this topic comes about or was there uh, for a long time. So we thought, why not do it? And <clears throat> we don't really have a path forward. We just know that we can probably reduce the size with the with the separate binary for this, or if we rewrite it to different language, right? And the other option can be to remove the forking altogether. But I guess that needs to be discussed if uh, we can guarantee the guarantees that the forking process is doing. Okay. Um... Janice, you've done some work in that area. Um, where is that, Mitchie? We no longer fork. Yeah, exactly. Like so, uh, I, I've tried to uh, 
um, estimate on this um, this removing this this um, weird launcher forking, and um, I think it, when I go um, gone back to to the when it what is when it was introduced, there was uh, there was some special uh, case, um, and that uh, that I think it covers. I think it's for container disks. Um, I haven't really used this uh, feature and I'm not sure if we ever use it um, on, on our side. Uh, so we thought that if it's not critical for us, we could just, just remove it. But I think um, if it's, um, if it's, um, yeah, the, the problem with, with forking is that I, I don't see that, that it really uh, does what, 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 what it's supposed to do because like there, there is always a chance that, that this, uh, and this monitoring process can go uh, away. Like, I don't know, it, it could be killed or, or whatever. And then the, there, there is no monitoring process and there is no one to, to clean up or, or wait for for those. Um, so uh, I don't see really, I don't really see a, a reason why we can just do it in in like special go routine or or something like that 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 would do, do this uh, um, like uh, watching. Um, and um, yeah, like mm -hmm. as um, Daniel mentioned, it uh, this this. Um, this monitoring um, just just uh, adds a lot of memory and and uh, to to overall. Uh, so yeah, that that should be discussed. Okay. Um. So would you say so? Um. Well, maybe we can define some of this. Um. Like, well. Um. So what was how we talk about like the reason for um. For like forking, does like does anyone want to talk to that? Like, um, in terms of you know what was the benefit of it, and then can maybe it, we can, can anyone hear a little me? bit. Yeah, hey Roman. Ah, okay, great. So I want to just say uh, the main purpose of it is that if w we have it as a precaution, it it does very little by intention, with because that means that the that it's very unlikely that this process crashes, while our grid launcher process that the one which is actually talking to liver and so on and to the VM uh, does a lot a lot more things and if it crashes our main process in the container is down and then it then all other processes would be stopped immediately and yeah so it's a precaution right so we don't want it as pid one right we wanted something else so that we just don't immediately once it fails we just go away like so in other words we it makes like because I, I understand like we like we, we want some sort of something else to to um to be there um so i guess the question is like so you knew you said create another go routine like if we have um you know how would that look like if because now you're now we're not forking but um you know if, if we were if it was like a go routine like what would be the go routine it's like and how would that sort of solve the problem of not having the process that it's pin one crash and we kind of lose um oh. just kind of panic out <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, if PID1 crashes today, or I'm sorry, if BERT launcher patch crashes today, the point of the PID1 and the forker is that we do some graceful cleanup of the QMU process if it's still around. So we'll attempt to shut it down in a way that's not going to cause disk corruption and things like that. So I think maybe that's the underlying reason why we even have catch all kind of thing like that. Originally, it was a bash script. And yes, if BERT, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to confirm what you said. Yes, that's the okay, reason why we have it. Yeah. Uh, so originally we had a bash script that would do this kind of cleanup. It was really unwieldy and uh, we just made a function and vert launcher that would do it. And then we just decided to fork vert launcher from vert launcher. I think we can achieve the same thing in a go routine and have it catch panics. So very first thing we do when vert launcher starts is we'll create this go routine. We'll have it uh, catch panics. So if a seg fault occurs or anything like that occurs, it immediately executes this go routine, and uh, then it's going to be the same, effectively the same thing.
Okay. So, yeah. so yeah, we the goals. So the goal is that we want we want to we want to have the ability to gracefully exit. So I guess the the question is how we can keep that without while doing it efficiently, right? That would yeah, be so we don't have to fork. To. I think that we can do it in a go routine. Uh, when a panic occurs, we have the opportunity to to still execute something. I think that will work. Maybe maybe somebody else has more thoughts on that. If we don't do that, the other alternative is to create a really stripped down uh, forker that only does exactly what we need that fork logic to do, rather than loading all, everything that Bert Launcher needs, because there's just a lot of dependencies and everything that gets started with Bert Launcher. And if we just have a really really small thin binary that's just in charge of launching Bert Launcher and then ensuring a Bert Launcher exits that the QME process. Uh, is torn down as gracefully as possible, then uh, that's great. And the result, if we don't have any of that, the result is that uh, the container runtime is just going to kill QMU and it might cause this corruption. Uh, that's our concern. Okay. I'm not aware of uh, an, an easy global catch all panics not been going, but if that exists, yeah, we can do that too. It's the same thing we do um, in um, all of our controllers, isn't it? Well, well, then we know exactly how many go routines there are, and we are doing that for every go routine that you catch them. But if I thought it was a hierarchy, so if we created the very first one, let's see. Maybe we will see. Okay, so um, you knew, so do you think you have a path forward? Like it's you. We brought up go routine. You think uh, you think like you think that makes sense? Do you want to explore that? Look at the recover command uh, in Golang. I think that we set a recover uh, command at the very top level of like the hierarchy that will uh, basically be a catch-all for everything. That's the very first line we have in the code. I would think that uh, anything that causes a sec fault from there would, I could be wrong, but that's my expectation. We'll get caught. It's not mine, but we'll see. Oh, it's not yours? Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm totally wrong there. Uh, investigate that. I'm like 50% sure now. You said this is in, is this a go or is this just like something in Kubert? This is a some sort of recover? Uh, the like, recover, it's like a go standard, what, what do we call it? It's oh, like, like recover from primitive. a panic, from like a go, okay. Yeah, it's it's literally called recover, it's a function. So I think like this, this recover like can be, um, can be uh, called in, in defer, right? So. You could just run defer and and in this defer function you would do the, yeah, the recover. But, but as far as I know, you you would have to do that for every go routine because it's it's bound to the go routine where where the panic occurs. If the panic occurs in another go routine and you did not the defer recover there, then it would still crash. But I may be wrong. We'll uh, okay, so recover is a built-in function that regains control of a panicking go routine. Yeah. So it might not be a catch-all. Yeah. Is there an equivalent of the C uh, at exit handling? We can add exit handlers for. Although those don't catch SIGVs, do they? Yeah, they don't. <laughs> Never mind. Well, so, so what are the um? So we have. So we could do panic. We could. We could have something to recover. I guess the panics, but that so like that we said that doesn't catch everything, right? Like if it's um, um, like what if um, like what are the other cases that we want to like? What if QMU just kind of like crashes? That's fine. If QMU crashes, then Vert Launcher knows what to do. Okay, so it's just Vert Launcher that we're trying to make sure we recover. Well, yes. So the, 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 the forked web launcher takes care of QEMO, Libert, and all the other stuff. It knows in any case what to do, but if something goes wrong there, then the other one kicks in and cleans up properly in a safe, in a hopefully sane way. It's best effort. It's all best effort. It's just to maintain uh, data consistency, I think. OK. Um, does that make sense to you, uh, Yunus? And, um... That kind of satisfy this this issue to you? Like you think you have a yeah yeah, yeah totally. I think it it makes total sense. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. Let's kind of bubble up a little bit higher. So we have this 
like this issue we have we have to reduce memory overhead. I think this is probably one of the issues that we can reduce the memory overhead in there. So I mean I guess what we could do is we can kind of tag cross tag the issues and this could be one of them. But there's there's probably more um maybe we can like we have profiling that we wanted to do. Um maybe we can find some more in there and we can uh we can kind of cross tag them to this issue. It can be like our catch-all. Okay. All right. Are there any more discussion we want to have on this? Let us go to the next one. Okay. All right. Let's go to Marcelo with uh, another evaluation report. Yeah. So, so I run the updates one uh, with the well, the main repository of this week. We. It's running like from 100 to 800 VMIs uh, in there of three clusters. And something that it's, I would say, maybe not go too much details here right now, but something that it's interesting here is uh, from 600 to 800 VMIs, it's taking like from like the worst case scenario of 95 percentile to create, you know, uh, the VMs. Yeah, if you can, the page one? that we were. It's, Which it's, one you want to open? No, the, the first, the first the thing I, that you, you were. The one I was in, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the first image now, yeah. Okay. The VM creation time, yes. So it has like 600 and 800, the, the two last ones. And the first one, took like five minutes, uh, the 95 percentile, you know, the worst case to create the VM, the VMI. And then with 800, it's, uh, you know, it's jumped to 10, to 10 minutes. So double the time to create the VMI. So, um, and it was not the double of number of VMs, was 600 to 800. So I would say it's not scaling very well, you know, the creation here. So this is this is what this test is showing here. Um, so no, don't know exactly what's. Okay. Yeah, it's varying like fifty, one hundred. Yeah. So like how many? This is how many nodes? This is eight hundred. How many? How many VMIs? This is eight hundred VMIs. It's eight hundred. You you have the VMI count. Yeah, you have off the VMI count. In the oh, I see it. Okay. Left. Yeah. Six hundred, four hundred, yeah. two hundred. Okay. Okay, so you're saying we double the time from six to eight. Um, the slowest VMIs take five or take 10 minutes, five minutes slower. The last 200 roughly, or the, yeah. the slow, the, the, some of the slower ones in the last 200. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was this with the, uh, the QPS range, change, so. Marcelo? No. Uh, I have another another experiment for that, but it, it the QPS, well, we, I will talk about that later, but it doesn't change too much the VM creation time. Okay. Okay. Um yeah. We will still have like this uh, stuck thread in the work queue that we'll we will need some investigation later that we can we can check in the in the yeah. What's that one? We said the the th the stuck thread in the work queue. What's um? What's that? Exactly. That unfinished a... work. Unfinished work. Work. Okay. Yeah. However, you see that it doesn't grow too much when we have like more VMs being created. You know, from six hundred to eight hundred, it's it is small the difference. So. Something, yeah, it's not, it's not because of the scale. It's, oh, that, that, it looks like it's not because of the scale of the VM creation, but something is stuck in the code. So that's the definition of unfinished work by, uh, from Kubernetes, this metric, that it's, when it grows the time here, it means that some threads are stuck. So um, not necessarily is that what's happening in the code, but might be that. Um, okay. Something is true is uh, running, true is low, yeah, something like that. 
Okay. So we um we might be able to catch these with profiling, right? Is that uh, maybe it's something we can look at? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I yep. think this is this is a good one for um to create an issue about that we can uh, see if we can locate these these slow these stuck threads and we do some profiling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Let's see what else. Yeah. Uh also this uh work queue the work queue at rate um down yeah this i think we're, we already have an issue for that but it's still like a, the vm controller disruption uh, budget it's the most intensive one and uh we have like some discussion about that you know previously here and i don't know who who mentioned that that this controller just actually the disruption budget shouldn't be that intensive so it's something that also that we should take a look and and see how to minimize this you know this controller maybe if it's if it's possible so actually i don't know what this this disruption budget is doing so if you guys know i don't know well, yeah i know you guys um... know yeah it shouldn't be it shouldn't be creating that much work uh yeah it'd be interesting to profile that it's creating um pod disruption budgets for virtual machines that have eviction strategy equals live migrate to ensure that the uh the vmi can't be torn down when somebody tries to drain a node so we're, we're forcing uh it to um, the eviction to fail and we're creating a live migrate as a result of that. It's a really simple controller. It shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely something to investigate. Okay. All right. I can add this as a um, mm -hmm. as another picture to that that issue then. Um, and then this one kind of interesting. So we have we have some vert handlers that are a little bit higher. You have a vert controller and up there just what's vert controller vmi versus vert controller node is this is this just the vert controller just different uh i guess different um informers or different control loops or something inside the vert controller yes okay work you latency pretty steady so we have one Okay, so we have, what does this tell us? This is like, we have 10 seconds for, from start the process to process Yeah. From the smallest to the largest, huh? And they're all 10 seconds. Okay, that's kind of weird. Um, let's see. So vert controller node gets pretty large. And then second place is the vert handler VM, which looks like it's down here, pretty tiny. So vert controller mm -hmm. node's got the, a big retry rate. Too much, okay. I would say. Yeah. yeah, this one, this might be this is a good, a good picture to go into the vert, um, into the the um, the efficiency issue is another data point. I think I've seen that retry rate before. It's it's when uh, I think both both vert controller and vert handler both want to update the node structure with labels, and so that um, you know whoever wins the other has to back off and retry. Well, something along those lines. I, I, um, I, saw, I saw lots of retries anyway as well. Okay. And I think it was to do with the, the labels. So it wasn't. So, Vert controller node will label. Annotation. It's going to label a node and say like, okay, hey, this is ready. This is where this. Like, what's good? What does it label with? I, I forget. Like, is it to say yeah, like, where's the VM's going to land here? Um, I don't recall actually. That's the one. <laughs> I had to look at it like our diagram again. And we talked about it there, but that that is kind of interesting. Um, I mean, you have this is 
this is three nodes. Yeah. Yes, three yeah. nodes only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what this would look like if you know if this. Uh, what? If it's like 100, how many nodes? Yes. Like if this. Yeah, with a hundred nodes, like um, if we're seeing this, if this jumps a lot. Bit controller node is coming from the. No, oh, it's a good question. What this is coming from? But we normally only do some thing on the. Hmm. No, I have no clue where it's coming from. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna add. I'll add these to the to that like catch-all card that has like the efficiency, um, the, the control loop efficiency, whatever it is that I, I remember. I remember what it's called. But I don't know what the issue is. Um, I'll find it on the. We have it in six scale uh, document, but um, I'll add those to it. Um, but it has additional data points. Okay, uh, unfinished work. Um, we kind of saw this earlier, right? This was, um, I don't know, we already talked about this. I mean, we, yeah, so we have a bunch of unfinished work. Yeah, eight. The nodes in VMI controller do not have much. But, I mean, still, I mean, sec 37 seconds, eight minutes. I guess this is the total count, right? Like, this is the total amount of time spent waiting or, or stuck. Like, it could be like it's, it's um, an accumulation. It's not just like one thing, right? Like, that's my guess. I, mean, I guess it depends on how you put the metric together. It's a rate, so so it it oh it's a rate. It should be, yeah. So this is not an accumulation. Okay, interesting. Okay, that's. I mean, I think all these are high. Then at least it seems like it. Yeah. Okay. It can be like some specific thread watching something maybe i i don't know it's just need to profile to see what's actually happening okay um memory uh we jump up i well, well first we'll go to the cpu this, this looks really good like we like just matches our infinite work and clearly when we're doing work we're doing work and we're using the cpu this like we're I wonder, Marcelo, like after the you delete right here, how long this takes to go down, um, kind of what it looks like over time. I mean, we can see kind of, we see a slight dip here, but it's still mm -hmm. kind of high. I and mean, we've deleted the VMs at this point. Um, where's the count? Where's our count to compare? Uh, right here. Yeah. So, like, was that so we'll go back and forth. So this was like around eight, a little bit past eight o'clock, eight o'clock there. So right here. So there's no VMIs, this huge gap. Here's our memory. Yeah, it's the V the VM count is the second figure. So yeah. We're talking we are we're talking megabytes and it's like oh I mean we're yeah, like uh, some few so is Meg that a stacked graph? Megabytes is still there. Is it? Sorry? Is that, is that a stacked graph? So each vert hand is using, what, two or 300 megas? Is that, is that what we're saying? And then they're all stacked together. All the vert handers across all the nodes are taking 1.86 gig or? Uh, uh, just trying yeah, to read the graph. They stack. Okay. Vert handler and fit controller, so, actually all the Oh, I see. So it's not actually, um, yeah. So it's not. Um, um, what seems to be increasing is the purple, actually. Isn't it? We can. Yeah, I can't see. Yeah. It's actually. Okay, I was looking at them as if they were, um, they were combined. But it, I think the purple one is the one. Like, so it goes at a max of 484, but it's actually like we see good um, peaks and it looks like it comes down to. Pretty close to what baseline was, so that actually looks fine. Since these are like yeah, I was saying these are stacked, then this is, then they're all doing that. Some of these aren't as mm -hmm. well, but it looks like they eventually get there. Yeah, it's increasing a little bit, but maybe the garbage collector will remove this memory. That's memory being. Um, what was that metric of the memory of the process or? 
like is that what Golang reports or memory's weird? It's Golang. Yeah. Okay, it's Golang. Uh, hmm. But I, I can double check that. So I, I think. Second. I think overall that I think overall it actually does look good. It it actually like because the graph is stacked, it, it if it wasn't stacked, it should it would look I think it would look similar to this. Like we would see like okay, so it's this. it's process resident memory. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think it's reported by the Google. We have the garbage collector, you know down also okay yeah so garbage man. collector it's oh, okay it's okay it, it's not a problem you know we have this a uh, cool you know rbca proxy that's actually it's doing more things for a garbage collector but there is nothing to do with cool beard so it's fine yeah this this thing is is it expected to use that much of threads? Our back proxy? Number of threads. So the go, go routines, it's it's expected to be high, but number of threads, like two two thousand threads. So, but well, well through, you know, three hundred fifty threads in virt handler. Do you know where the airbag proxy is? Who uses it? The, the cool RBAC proxy. Yeah, do you know who's using it? Like, it's, it's something for security. Isn't it? So, oh, who is using it? I don't know. Okay. Wait. So threads get spun off uh, by the Go runtime, depending on how many Go routines. Uh, is, that, is that accurate? I think that makes sense to me. Right. Uh, it was some dynamic. Yeah. And then maybe it gets cleaned up based on the number of go routines that exit. So we're leaking go routines. Perhaps it's possible that would be represented in threads. I'm not seeing a huge thing. Like, it didn't. No, it's not leaking anything anymore. So in the last one, you see like this actually is still many go routines. Yeah. But because the VMIs didn't finish, many VMs got stuck to be deleted. And that's actually my next comment for the next experiment. So Kevin well, fixed, uh, first of all, yeah. link that we have. It. So there was a go, what version were you testing? Was this the latest in main or is this a previous release? It's the main, main, main repository. As of like this or last week? Uh, uh, this week, actually, probably okay. Monday we're, we're or totally Tuesday. Yeah, that fix would have gone in. And uh, as I mentioned before uh, with Ryan, the TCG latency, you see it's fine. It's everything. It's under 10 milliseconds. I think you were doing some evaluation with a huge spike isn't it, of TCG latency before. Yeah, um, but I, I yeah, don't that see was any with, problems uh, in my test about that. So yeah, I, I don't I didn't think you would. It, it, it's like that was showing the worst case from the API server under incredibly high load. Yeah. Okay. Um, the things that gets interesting here well, this is a Roman the rate limit. Yeah, this is the right Okay, layer. so okay. if but it's related to the, the the previous one also for the storage operation. Okay. okay. So yeah, we we have the another uh, I have another uh, file showing things when I increase the you know the rate limit actually the the burst and curves per second. Okay, so we can see here that I was mentioned uh, to delete the VM. So I have like uh, in this experiment here, very low performance when I delete the VMs. It sometimes takes hours to delete VMs or doesn't delete. So I need to force the deletion of the VMs later, uh, you know, by hand. Uh, and this is 
directly related to many uh, um, storage operation errors. You can see here uh, in the well in the figure in the right part the storage operation errors. It's uh, okay. So the VMI that I'm creating it's uh, using ephemeral uh, uh, volumes with empty gear that right? creates the empty gear. Maybe different uh, volumes has different performance, but that's what we have here. And it has a lot of empty gear uh, error uh, to amount this and to get stuck to amount that. And it doesn't delete the pod and it remains forever uh, sometimes. However, surprisingly, when I increase the rate, uh, the, the cars per second, the, the burst time for you know, the experiments for the rate limiters, it's fixed that problem. Um, I don't know why, what's related to that, but it's, it's actually, I don't see any uh, VM deletion problem anymore after increase this rate limit. So maybe you can go to the, to the next link, uh, actually the next document. So, uh, uh, so I didn't follow no, not, not which rate one. did it's, you increase? Yeah, I, I'm going to show. So okay. if you see here, uh, no, this is not just one else, sorry. <laughs> it's not very well. Uh, Wait, which, so is it this one right here, the how to configure? Uh, yeah, the other, the other one in the right, yeah. That one, okay. Uh, 13 also, the name here, the experiment 13. Not, okay, anyway. storage operation rate. Okay, so if you go down, a little, go, if you go up just a little bit for okay. the configuration, just a little bit more. Oh, yes. Okay, so this, this, this is the configuration that I changed. So uh, it's, I increased the burst to 100 for this uh, components here, the curves per second to 50. I think by default was five and 10, something like that before. Uh, I also, it's maybe a question to Roman. Um, just, is there other components here that we also tune or these are, are all the components? And the other question is when I change that, only the virtual controller reboot. So, well, restarted, you know, uh, the pod restarted. The virtual handler didn't restart. So I don't know if it's actually got uh, the configuration there or if it doesn't need to restart to use this uh, configuration. Um, anyway, so just, this was my doubt here when I applied that. And then this is the, sure. uh, the results. Yes, with, with and without. Um, I didn't, so I didn't have time to put all the figures here also. But the point is, it didn't change the VM creation time. Also, it didn't fix all the, the rate limit with this configuration. It's improved. It's not. Five, uh, 500 milliseconds anymore. It's actually 250 if you go to the other figure. And you, we don't, I don't, yeah, you see, it's still like, oh, I see. This yeah, is what that need okay, to increase it. a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. The storage operation error rate disappears. Exactly. So surprisingly, I would say. Um, I don't know what's the relationship of that, but it's interesting. Uh, interesting. I would say. And so this was going back to the other document. So you had, is this just more zoomed in? Is that what the, yeah, okay, I see. This 600. Is just, okay, these are just, this is just one of them. This yeah. is the 600. Fox. Okay, I see. And yeah. we get none. And then while it's over here, we get quite a few. Okay. And also by comparison, you have mm -hmm. this. Okay, I see. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, it's a thinner, um, in a graph and interesting and none for the error rate. Huh, okay. Well, this is, I mean, this is a good thing, Marcel, to just keep a note of. I mean, I guess we can, I, I don't know what the conclusion point yet we can draw from this, but um, 
I mean, this seems better. It's a good number that we can kind of keep in the back of our minds as something that does provide this um, this improvement. So I guess that's something we can keep in mind. I wonder if it's one of the. Um, I wonder if it's one of these. Like I wonder if it's um, if it was literally one of these that did this. Um, I'm guessing it's like uh, maybe the handler. I'm guessing yeah, it's might the be. handler. Okay. Cool. Okay. And then um, did you want to talk at all about this one? This was the other one I saw. This was um, this one, I think. Yeah, this, this one. Yeah, let me go very quickly from that. So this was the experience to try to run 500 VMs in the node. And actually, it was hard to do that. I increased this uh, timeout for the uh, TMU that we had for, and and then many other, you know, many other change numbers of device and things. But in the end, I actually create five hundred VMs once, and actually the VMs, it's when it's get like close to the CPU very very close to 80 or 90% of the CPU utilization in the node. And also, I would say also 8 or 9% of um, memory utilization in the node, things get very nasty. So the operation system start to queue, even though it has one giga of memory you know, in the node, operation systems start to queue some, some, no, some uh, containers and the VM, so the, the, the operation system also is very slow. Um, it's, it's I, so I log into the node and even though it drops the CPU utilization, for example, to 50 something, but it's, everything's very slow. I see a lot of, as I mentioned, interrupt, you know, calls in the kernel and, and some, containers are being killed, but I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but when it's the, it's saturated the node, it's get like unstable. That's the, what I'm saying. I also test with three different runtimes, the Docker, Container D and Cryo, and Container D had better performance. It's the Cryo and Docker were timing out uh, to create the containers with uh, far, you know, much less, uh, could create less VMs, less pods, I would say. And and then I could create safely 550. So, uh, you know, before, but not five, you know, 450, sorry, but not 500. So 50 contain 50 VMIs changed yeah, a lot. So because we, we were pushing to a limit, I would say to pressure into the system that uh, it was breaking the system, let's say with 500, uh, but 450 was fine. Okay. So this, uh, what's and interesting then, to yeah, me is uh, the, the, this, nice. this creation time, Marcelo. So I'm seeing here, so uh, it looks like 50, 100, 200. 50, 100, 200, and then 200 all the way to 400, it's almost the same. It's like like we hit a threshold here and then we kind of, we leveled off, which is, which is kind of interesting. It, yeah, it, it was, might be the bucket size. It was interesting for me also. There's a limit to the bucket size. Uh, uh. Oh, it's like a 10, <laughs> and so we're, oh, yeah, so it's me. much higher than. Let me double check this. Uh, yeah, okay. so if that's the case, then everything's just going in that last bucket. Uh, yeah. By the way, David, I still don't see the pending. <laughs> it is 10 minutes. That's the highest. Oh, bucket. okay. <laughs> okay, so it's it's up here somewhere off the chart, probably. <laughs> I didn't think we would hit that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you've, you've broken through the limits. So okay. we can add more buckets there or, or revise the buckets. I, I based it on what I thought would be realistic. Um, that's 
Well, that's an indication. To, I mean, what's more data going to give us here? That's pretty terrible if it takes 10 minutes to start uh, to get to a VMI that's running. And is that the P99 or something, or is that the average? What? 95. Okay. P95. Okay. Well, that's, that's terrible. Um, so I don't know if it matters. We add more buckets. We need to figure out why it's taking so long. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, Marcelo. Yeah, I mean, this would be another really good. Um, I mean, we call it, we call this, this is what's called density. Like, we just kind of load the note up. Is that what we want? To, is that what people call this? Is that the kind of canonical term for this? Density test? Yeah, well, density. Yeah, this test. Well, we can, whatever. That's, we can call it that. So, like, I think it, this would be another one. I, I kind of, I'll add this. I think if I don't have it, I'm going to add it to our profile list, um, Marcelo as a thing. I mean, since you're kind of doing this already, this would be cool when you hit like right here. I mean, this is, seems like it's going to be exponential. I'm guessing like we're going to be up here. I, it would be cool to see a profile of this mm -hmm. and to see like this guy at 200, what's going on. And then 300, 400 and see what, see what we can mm -hmm. find. I mean, you probably have, do you have the other, uh, some work you add rate? Let's see. Work you retry rate. This is so work control. It's not, it's one node. That's interesting. It's one node and we're still shooting up there. Okay. And then unfinished work. Oh, so here we go. We're at 12 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this yeah, would be a cool in profile. Even worse. Yeah. I mean, you actually see mm -hmm. like this, this peak is this not much of a difference, which is interesting. And then we kind of we basically double. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm this this unfinished work is really just an interesting one. Maybe I'll attach these unfinished work ones to the um, to that um, profiling. I think getting this information um, that's going to be really pretty helpful. It might give us some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, pretty cool. Okay, this is a lot of good charts in here. Um, thanks, Marcelo. Okay. Uh, all right, any last uh, finishing words here? We're at time. Anything anyone wants to bring up? Is, um... Yeah, just okay, a very ahead. quick update for the continuous performance uh, jobs there, evaluation jobs there. Um, it was not, uh, so the job there was not being collected, the metrics. Um, I'm working on that with Frederico. Um, we are we tried like we are debugging that to see well many configuration what's happening that the right. metrics were not being collected so because what we have is it's like a global prometheus that's running the cluster and then there is another cluster that is created for the for the uh the, the job to run you know the the, the tasks and that's also creates a prometheus and this global Prometheus needs to collect the metrics of this local Prometheus. And it was not being collected. So, so, okay. um, so we don't have results for that. And the, the new uh, Grafana dashboard is there. Uh, I think maybe we will have it merged soon. So let's hope for that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I, I want to, I, I have some ideas of what we could add to. Um, so that's awesome. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for your time. Um, have a good day. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye.